What is good people? It's your boy Dan. Back with another video. In a different room. In a different place. But I am in a new apartment or living space. So, it's time to play the game. What brand are you copying and making a shitty version of? No. No. Oh yeah. So, I'm basically gonna show you how I made these Greg Lauren type pants. So now, if you know Greg Lauren, you know he is the nephew of Ralph Lauren. And that's basically most likely how he got his name. Although, his pieces are super cool. I love the Americana, but a very DIY twist to it. The only thing is, his shit is dumb expensive. Like $800 for a flannel that has like rips on it and shit. Or not rips, but like DIY scene detailing, whatever you want to call it. But let's be honest, it's a uh, little fucking expensive. You know what I'm saying, dude? I know it's Ralph, but it ain't really Ralph. So, we're basing it off of this guy. Now, his version, if I'm remembering correctly, they are more so of a green army pant, like a cargo pant, I mean, mixed with some sweats. So what I want to do, I have these leftover pieces from a previous project that I did with some cream Levi's. So I had half of those legs that I wanted to use for another project because, you know, I'm trying to be sustainable and shit, boy, you gotta keep that environment, like, clean and shit. But I'm gonna basically take you through how I made these guys, um, what I was thinking, and, uh, show you what they look like on, and then we're gonna get out of here real quick, because I'm uncomfortable. So I've always liked to shave the Greg Laurent pants that, um, he's always producing. It's always different fabrics, and the most notable one that I at least know is, of course, the green army cargo pant, and then those gray sweats. So, first off, what I needed to do was figure out the shape. Now, I laid the pant flat, and then I basically, using thin twill tape, you could basically use anything, uh, just something like with a quarter, quarter of an inch diameter, make the shape that you want, figure out what's gonna look, what you think is gonna look nice, when you are pinning each side, make sure you're only getting that side. So if you're doing the front, only get the front. With the twill tape, if you're doing the back, only get the back of the pant. Just because you want to be able to put them on and see what they look like and see what the shape looks like. So after getting the shape that I liked, I took the Levi panel, put it over the pant, pinned it in the middle so it would stay put, and then slowly smooth it out and then start pinning where my shape was or where that twill tape was. After that, I unpin the middle, took it off, and then basically what I did was trace the one pan panel onto the other pan panel just so it would be the same shape. So after I did this, I basically cut the panel into the shape that, I, that the pins were in. So basically all I had to do was lay it on the pan and then stitch it. So basically from here, if I'm remembering correctly, what I had to do was I had to take out the side seam of the pan and basically rip out the seam so I could basically lay the pan flat and sew it into the machine a lot easier. I don't even think you would be able to do it if it was basically a tube. Basically what I did was I seam ripped it up to the pocket and then laid it flat and then started pinning the cream panel on top of the pan. Now I wanted to do it this way just because I didn't want to cut the pan just yet, just in case I messed up and I had to redo it or once that both legs are pinned, what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically take it into the sewing machine. I wanted to sew a quarter of an inch in so I would be able to get some fraying effect and get a little bit more of that DIY look or that, that look that um, that Greg has with his pants. It's usually the green khaki pant that has the distressing, but on this one it's obviously going to be the cream twill. Starting from that leg opening, uh, get to that, that point that I made, then I would pivot, then go all the way down to the other side of the leg opening, take it out, and then 
Basically what I did was I would leave about two inches on each side of the green pant and then cut that out just so just in case I could move it around still have a little bit of room just in case there were any mess ups but luckily there were no mess ups so after I top stitched both of the panels on basically all I had to do was get the leg opening that I wanted and I wanted a seven inch leg opening so something more of a slim straight after getting the right profile of the leg that I wanted I had to try it on a couple times and make sure that it was going to fit right and basically after that all I had to do was sew up the side seams and uh, Bob's your uncle. Now, personally, I really like these. They're actually, in my opinion, one of my better pieces that I've ever made. There wasn't too much with it. I guess that's probably why they came out so nice. There's definitely some things that I would like to change or would have liked to add, but it just didn't seem plausible at the time or make sense for the video. I think the shape of it looks really cool. I'm really excited to keep wearing them and for the panel to start fraying. I don't want to fray it. I want it to fray naturally. And it's already starting to do that just because there's, it's a raw edge, so I mean, it's gonna fray. If you wanted to, you could obviously turn back and then top stitch it down so it wouldn't have a frayed edge if that's what you're looking for. That's really easy, just a little bit more time consuming. He does a lot of Western motifs, which I think is super cool, and I think the pant kind of reflects that. So I think that was a, a really cool combination, how like unintentionally it kind of made it more of a, or looked more like a Western style pant. They kind of remind me of like riding pants or like western pants or some leather chaps or something like that. Uh, I think the, the green and the gray from the Greg Laurent pants is also is a really nice color combo because it kind of clashes but not really. And I think the same thing with this one even more so because it's like almost white. It's like a, a cream or uh, off-white. It's, uh, it's going to be a cool pant to wear and uh, to get some... Uh, get some good wear and tear into it and to make it a little bit more unique. And altogether, these guys costed me about, I would say, maybe 16 bucks to make at most. Uh, it only took me like a, a few hours altogether. I like how the front is a little bit smaller than the back part of the panel. I mean, I kind of wanted it to give a little bit of a uh, less uniform, more fluid of shape, because that's kind of what I saw and noticed with the regular run pants. And, Kind of got there, kind of not. I mean, this one is definitely more of a uniform. Uni this one is definitely a uniform shape. God, the words are so hard, man. But again, I really like how these came out. Kind of like some rider pants or some some leather chaps from some Western movies. But I'm super excited to wear these. That's about it. That's gonna conclude it for this video. If you like the video, give it a like. Comment if you would wear this or make it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to follow me on my social media, it is D-A-N-B-E-R-H-E-Y on Instagram. It's linked in the description along with my Twitter. If you want to see what I'm selling, it's linked below on my d pop and my Grailed. Thank you for watching. Take care. Peace.